know there's something about the Salina weather this this year. It's it's schizophrenic, I tell you. This week alone, what Monday you in like shorts? It's good. And it's bad. It's good. It's bad. What's the deal? I mean, I was warm in shirt sleeves on Monday, and then Tuesday I was sliding in snow. But we needed the snow. Yeah, we need. We, we need more. Now you know, you know, just stay one or the other. That's right. I don't like change. No. <laughs> Stuck in a rut. Yeah, I know. This dude is. I've been here with him for well, three years. Hello and welcome to your old news update. I'm Mr. Rut Izzy Fitz and you're Mr. Rut. Rod Driscoll, who, you know, wants that. some exercise excitement. You know, let's give a little bit of love to our sponsors. All right. Eagle Crest Retirement Community. 1501 East Magnolia. Yeah, Magnolia's open, so you can get there now. Finally. Finally. Headley's Clothing, 1829 South 9th, and right here, baby, and Smoky Hill Museum, 211 West Iron. When you're there, you're history. That's right. Topping the headlines right. from yesterday. Tell here's a little a bit, of, little bit of current events here. All right. Took place in February 10th, 1963. Ooh. Straw polls in the Salina League of Women Voters indicate members of the group favor renewed discussion between the county and city commissioners concerning the feasibility of joint county city government facilities and and believe it or not support a fluoridation program for the city of salina which the city with the city commission adopting that program and then here's here's another little tidbit uh, uh, a little caper a, a little tennis a caper, caper. A caper. February 10th, 1963, a tennis net missing from Oakdale Park, that's right over there, mm -hmm. since November, was fished from the old Smoky Hill River Channel Friday afternoon. So if anybody owns that tennis net, of course it was 50 years ago, so they're probably not around anymore. Nah. But, uh, they were probably know, you, trying to catch fish with that net. That's true. Yeah, well, speaking of something fishy, we'll go back 75 Excuse years me. ago to February 4th, 1938. Mm -hmm. A peculiar dish could be concocted from the ingredients L.E. Gafford, County Welfare Director, will dish out the first three days of next week from surplus government commodities. The Welfare Office is issuing 2,800 pounds of dried apricots, 946 pounds of rice, and 1,600 pounds of shortening, a lard compound. Well, you know, that well, that's lunch keep, for you, isn't it? <laughs> that could, I'm, yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I was going to say that could keep me on my diet. Oh, I if that's all I had to then eat. Don't bring up that diet thing. I mean, I, oh, I, know, no. there's, I know there's a viewer or two keeping track. Shh. Okay. Okay. All right. February 9th, 1938. A resolution increasing the sheriff's allowance for feeding prisoners mm. in the county jail uh, from 60 cents up to 70 cents a day was passed this mm. week by county commissioners. The allowed is still below the pre-depression figure of 75 cents a day. Prisoners in confinement are given two meals daily. So in other words... Apricots, rice, and lard. And they can throw them in the slammer and I can drop a few. I know. Well, you could. I could. Just got to keep lard out of the meal. Well, anyway, let's go back to 100 years. Yeah, that's a long happening. time ago. That's always a colorful period. Yes, it is. February 4th, 1913. That's not a plain bill. Dateline Plainville. Plainville. Clarence Prosser of Plainville had his experience last week, which he will not forget for some time. Mr. Prosser was one of the men helping to fill the Union Pacific Ice House, which is now filled to the top. Yesterday, while pulling a huge cake of ice weighing about 500 pounds up the ice sheet, coming. to the top of the ice house, one of the iron tongs broke, and Mr. Prosser was in such a position that he was caught by the cake of ice and carried down the chute, <sighs> toboggan style. Oh, it's, it's an like Olympic, could have been an Olympic event. Could have been. The ice cake on which he rode struck the bottom of the car with such force that it shot out the door on the opposite side, carrying Mr. Prosser with it. Mr. Prosser struck on the adjoining track and dislocated his hip. Ooh, that's a, a chilly thought. That was almost like a chilly. Buster Keaton comedy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a silent movie. That's right, that's right. Except for the dislocated hip. And finally, yes. and finally, February 10th, 1913, Milton Stiefel, oh, the little four-year-old right. son of Mrs. Minnie B. Stiefel, who was quite sick at the home on South Santa Fe, Santa Fe is right. better. Yes, and way to go, Uncle Milty. Yeah, and he became better and became a big clothing magnet in Salina. And now the Stiefel Theater for the Pouring Arts is performing arts. 
And that's Probably what we're doing is performing. Yeah, I don't know if there's a very much, good job of it either. There's not much art, but yeah, right. we're performing nonetheless. Right. Read more about the way things used to be in the look back section of Monday's Salina Journal. Yes, and you have a good chilly week, and we'll see you yesterday.